The Achaean League is a very special Hellenistic league in the eyes of many historians. The home of Polybius and one of the most influential states in the Roman conquest of Greece. But just before the start of the mod in 280 BC, the second Achaean League was established as a rival to the Antigonid Macedonians. Who would have guessed, my friends? Who would have guessed? But in the mod, they are a very difficult faction with some great rewards in the future once you get those army reforms. So today, I'm going to show you how you can forge a small little empire on the Peloponnese and in central Greece in a little over 15 turns with a decent-ish income coming in and a fat full stack ready to go out and conquer. So stay tuned to find out how. Hi guys, welcome back. I am Red Z, and today we are back with another faction guide. I know it's been a little while, guys, and I'm very sorry about that, but we are back today, ready to go with the Achaeans. Genuinely one of my favorite nations in the game. I think I've said that for about five nations already. <laughs> but yeah, it genuinely is one of my favorite nations in the game. A very, very good nation if you know what you're doing. And I just wanted to give a little shout out to Rather Incoherent, who has done a full playthrough as the Achaean. So if you want to see, you know, how you can follow along with that directly, you can go and watch that campaign as well. Well, but today we are going to be showing you how you can use these guys to thrive in the Peloponnese and Greece as one of the strongest military little nations out there because their roster is very, very good. And I just wanted to show you we are, of course, on very hard, very hard, and we are going to stick the old extreme mode for today. So the Achaeans start out here on the northern side of the Peloponnese. You start with Aegeon as a large town and Dima as a town, which is actually richer than Aegeon at the minute. So very, very poor land that you start with. However, you do start with um, an army. Yes, an army. Not a great army, but it is an army nonetheless. You do have some foreign Thurioforoi, which are a trash unit of Thurioforoi. But your real saving grace here is the Achaean Epilectoi. And you do start with a level 4 recruitment in Aegeum and in Dima a level 2. So you do have a little bit of ability to recruit early on. And you're going to have to use that if you want to succeed as the Achaeans in this campaign. To the north of you, you have the treacherous Aetolian League. And to the south, you have Elis, Macedon and Sparta. Of course, with the ability for Megalopolis and Argos to come out as well. And in the east, we have Athens. So, lots of enemies around us. A few rebel settlements, however, and Greek city-states that pretty much buffer us this whole side here. So, that is a very good advantage for us early on. So, that brings us on to the strengths and weaknesses. And firstly, I'm going to just reiterate what I said. You are buffered off. Buffered off? <laughs> You are buffered. You have buffer states against your enemies over here in the sort of uh, southeast of you. With the GCS being programmed to be passive, these guys are likely not going to attack you even on very hard. And of course, the rebels are just going to chill in their own territory and they have very big garrisons. So it's unlikely that the enemy is going to come and take these off them early doors indeed so you do have a good buffer to start with with a couple of other routes for expansion your second strength is the fact that you have after reforms a very 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 strong unit roster it is indeed after reforms one of the best greek rosters in the whole area and you even get specialized aor units as the megalopolitan chalcospedes and the argive epilectoi and the requirements to get these units are not even that high at 25 battles to get your phalangites of course it's a little bit harder but you're going to be able to survive 
pretty darn well with Epilectoy and Thorakitai very early on. You even get your own Epilectoy unit as a recruitable unit at level 3 barracks, I believe. Yeah, third tier barracks. So a very, very good unit that you can recruit really early on. Your third strength is a little bit of a weaker one. It is the fact that you are allied to the Ptolemies to start with. And this, of course, is historically accurate. An alliance with the Ptolemies to ward off the Antigonids. And it's not exactly the greatest strength, but it may cause some of your enemies to think twice before attacking you, even though they're not going to be called in to the war anyway. But it may, you know, just tip some of those enemies over into not attacking you, but it's not exactly the greatest strength. Let's talk about some of your weaknesses then. And first of all, your starting army, although you have the Epilectoi, is very similar to, say, the Athenian, the Spartan armies that they start with. I mean, the Aetolian army is definitely better than ours to start with. This army is not good. <laughs> it goes without saying, guys. It's not good. Um, the Epilecto is the saving grace here, but everything else is pretty much basement tier, bastardly trash. <laughs> is bastardly even a word? I hope it's a word. And if it's not a word, can we make it a word? Bastardly. <laughs> it's like dastardly, but bastardly. But anyway, your, uh, you know, your starting army is pretty awful. And your second weakness is the fact that unlike some of the other smaller factions like Sparta, you do not start with anyone that is particularly very good at war. This guy's only got two command. He does have three troop morale, which is actually fantastic. But everyone else, you can see zero, zero, and one. So you don't really start with a very good general at all. And your third weakness is a generic weakness for all of these nations in the central of the Peloponnese. You are surrounded by enemies, even with your buffer, and you will be attacked like crazy by pretty much everyone when it comes down to it. So let's now talk about the Achaean roster, and I'm going to try to go a little bit faster on some of these roster ones, so let's not ramble on too long. And firstly, I've got to say, the Achaean roster is very very good. Out of all those minor sort of Greek city-states and leagues, it is the best roster in my opinion. My humble opinion. Of course, you don't get any Epibates or anything like that, but you don't need them, guys, because you have a fantastic roster. So your base roster is here in front of us. You have some foreign 304 right? Pretty darn bad unit. Not great at all. That is your basement level unit. But hell, it's better than Helots, my friend. It's better than Helots. You have a Kian Hoplites that are a pretty standard Hoplite unit. 38 defense and 11 attack. 14 morale is good. But you also get access to the Kian Epilectoi, which are a fantastic unit early game. 41 defense is very good for an infantry unit early game with 16 morale and 13 melee attack. And to get these guys, you only need level 3 barracks and level 3 recruitment. So in Igeon early on, you can get these guys as soon as you get to Minor City, which is why I'd recommend enslaving when you go conquering to start with. Um, in terms of your missile units, pretty standard across the board. Greek archers, Akontistai, and Achaean slingers. Slightly different from the normal slingers. Slightly better, the Achaean slingers, with seven missile attack. So better, in fact, than your archers. So... Be wary of that, guys. Get the slingers rather than the archers when you are playing as a Kia. And along with that, you get the Achaean Peltas that are just very similar to a Greek Peltas in general. So just not that much difference between them and the Greek Peltas, but a decent Peltas unit nonetheless. Let's have a look at these boys. Very nice indeed. They all look very focused, don't they, my friends, on what needs to happen. Behind them, we have the standard cavalry. We've got the Greek general's bodyguard, which, of course, is standard across the Greeks, although may not be at some point. We have the Achaean Zistophoroi here, which, of course, standard Zistophoroi unit. Not much defense, but good charge and good morale. So, in fact, I think the Achaeans are slightly weaker than some of the other Zistophora you might see in the game. So, not the best uh, Zistophora unit, but a good unit for cavalry charges all the way through the game. 
you also get access to the Espidophori, which is often a reform unit for many nations without reform. So 15 morale, 12 melee attack, 27 defense, and 36 charge. A very solid cavalry unit. A very good cavalry unit. In fact, not quite elite, but close to being so. A really good cavalry unit in general, I would say. Very good indeed. And of course, you get the Prodromoi. The less said about those guys, the better. But your reforms as the Achaeans is really where you get to see some of these boys, some of these insanely good elite units that you get as the Achaeans. The first reforms then is to fight 25 battles. That's literally it. So not even hard to get. And with that, you get your first phalangite unit, which is the Me Megalopolitan Chalcospedes. And as Chalcospedes go, as, um, sorry, as phalangites go, these guys are bog standard right in the middle. A solid mid-tier phalangite with their 36 defense, 16 morale, and 18 melee attack so not bad at all as your first phalangite unit it's not like the deuteroy of epirus you also get the argive epilectoi so not to be mistaken for the achaean epilectoi i believe these guys are factional in your roster so not just recruitable from argos unlike everyone else but these guys are insane 43 defense 17 morale and 13 melee attack for a spear-wielding hoplite unit is just very, very good. <laughs> There's not much else I can say about that. A fantastic unit. Going to do very well against cavalry and all that jazz. And along with that, you get your first Thorakitai boys. Looking very nice indeed. Here they are. And a standard Thorakitai unit there. 35 defense, 15 morale, 12 melee attack with a couple of jabbies to throw into the enemies and just remember that 12 melee attack with this sword is a lot better in melee against infantry than this spear at whatever whatever it was 13 melee attack so just remember that your second reform slightly harder to get and it has two requirements you've got to control 14 cities so that's not too difficult on the new map. That's pretty much just the Peloponnese, maybe a bit of Attica, maybe Aetolia as well. But with at least 65 turns. So you must have played 65 turns. So when you get 14 cities, don't think that you are just going to get these guys straight away. You've got to wait for those 65 turns. And the reason why they've done that is because, of course, this is a pretty OP reform, in my opinion. First of all, you get your standard Achaean Peltophoroi, a standard um, phalangite unit that is actually not as good as your megalopolitan Chalcospedes. If we have a look at that, the megalopolitans are actually better, so get them instead, even though these guys do look insanely good. But the Achaean Epilectoi phalangites, your elite Agema phalangites, 39 defense, 18 morale, 19 melee attack, a fantastic, fantastic unit. Very good indeed and i love seeing sheila buff represented once again on the shields very nice to see along with them you get the late thurio for standard thurio for really not that good so don't really worry about them but along with that you get the neo cretan aphibes not quite as good as a neo cretan archer but gonna do very well overall with the 160 range and the 18 defense and of course the eight missile attack and finally in the back you get the achaean zistophori reformed and look at these guys they do look very nice indeed and they're just a better version of your uh, of your zistophori with more defense more morale and more melee attack with 39 charge my friends that's very good indeed so you can see why i love this roster so much you have options with both hoplite based and uh, phalangite based if you want and some good heavy cavalry to boot a very versatile and very fun roster to play with so back on to the campaign map
So let's move on to your building roster. And of course, as always, it is the same for everything else apart from the temples. Now, I've got to say, the temples for the Ikeans are absolutely insanely good for your homeland. Insanely good. But you lack a lore temple. That is the big thing you're lacking. But genuinely, I think this will make up for it because you have very good selection of temples. You've got the Temple of Dionysius, which is a tax income bonus of 20% at the fourth tier, of course. But it's happiness and tax income. So it's both happiness and money, which is, you know, something that everybody loves. <laughs> temples. Uh, the second temple is the Temple of Hermes. Now, that is a trade temple, and it is a fantastic trade temple. Not a scabby temple of Poseidon. No, this is the glorious temple of Hermes with a 40% trade income bonus backed up by an increase of trade of 200%. So if that, uh, if I'm right, I believe those bonuses affect sea and land, whereas Poseidon pretty much just affects the sea. But I could be wrong on that. Someone correct me down in the comments. And your third temple is a fantastic military temple, the Temple of Heracles, that gives bonuses to experience and to weapons as well. So a very, very good selection of temples. Like I say, your main weakness is the fact that you do not have the ability to get a lore temple at this moment in time. So you're going to struggle for lore in the faraway regions. But luckily, you know, your, your early campaign is all centered around the Peloponnese and Greece. So it's going to be a long time before you get to a very faraway region such as Pella, all that sort of thing. I would recommend just moving your capital. And I don't think that's against something that the Achaeans would do. If they had got a large empire at some point, I mean, at one point they had taken most of the Peloponnese. And if they had, you know, carried on going north, I feel like they would definitely have continued moving their capital to, you know, bring all the people together in a centralized area. So I think that's a good idea for you to do to get more lore than you would otherwise by leaving it in IGOM. So guys, the part you've all been waiting for, these starting moves as the Achaean League. And if you got to this point, guys, I would highly appreciate a like and a subscribe if you are enjoying these faction guides for RIS. Now, there are many different ways you can skin a cat in this game. And of course, there are many different things you can do as the Achaeans to start with. However, there are only really two methods of expansion that are really viable, in my opinion, if you're not doing something insanely crazy, like going for roads or something like that. So from your starting position, the first option is to simply just go for the Aetolians. And like we mentioned in the Aetolian League guide, the Aetolian lands are very, very defensible and very easy to keep hold of. Your really only thing that can come down from the north is Epirus or the Acarnanians, which you can either sell this land to the GCS or you can just leave it as is and maybe put, put a couple of forts. You can put a fort there, you can put a fort there and it's a really nicely defended area. However, they're a little bit of a bigger nation than the second method, which is to go after Ellis. Now with Ellis, there are two different options as well. Because we could go straight for Ellis on the capital, which has no walls. And we can take out their whole army if we go this way to start with. Or you can go for Olympia and hope that they'll come out and give you a draw out battle. That is also a viable option. I would say that option is more viable on lower difficulties where the AI is going to take a few more fights against you, I would say. However... I still think going for Ellis to start with is the best option. Now, this battle is going to be bloody, and it's going to be pretty brutal. However, um, once you've taken out this army, you are going to be in a pretty darn good situation for the rest of the campaign against Olympia. So, you know, Olympia is not going to be able to train anything in the time that you uh, take Ellis and then go to Olympia. So it really, really is a good strategy because once you've taken out Ellis, 
they ain't going to put up any more of a fight, and you should be able to take Olympia very quickly indeed. Now, we're going to leave behind Margos in here, and we're going to leave behind Dion as well. I'm going to take two generals. We're going to take Kleinas of Sikion, and we're going to take Profantos as well. Reason being that they are both better commanders. Kleinas is actually leading, even though... Yeah, Profantos has zero now. I've reloaded the game, so... I'm assuming some of these guys get random stats at the start. But you can see that Kleinas over here has some better command. Whereas our faction leader, he's only got one command, but he's got good management there. And Dion has 10 management as well, which is pretty insanely good. Now, I'm going to check for mercenaries because we don't have much in the way of uh, infantry troops. We've got three units of infantry troops and not much else. So this is going to be interesting how this battle goes. So we're also going to do our management of the economy. We're going to put both of these up to very high indeed. And we're going to have a look at what we can build in here too. So let's have a look at Dimer. I'm thinking the best thing here is the Shrine to Hermes. 10% trade income bonus, which is great. And then I'm also going to do exactly the same thing in Aegeon, because that's going to allow us to get an Achaean Hoplite in there, and also a Foreign Thurio Foroi in Daima, which is so, so much better than not being able to recruit someone else in there, especially when we are losing so much money to start with. In terms of the Diplomat, you can go around, try get alliances and trade rights with certain nations, and definitely... Like, alliance with the Antigones would be pretty juicy, not going to lie. Trade rights with the Greeks. No, they don't want they don't want it at all. Uh, and then, you know, going talking to Athens, all that sort of thing. You can try and sell all that stuff to get a bit of extra money at the start, but that is completely up to you. So, let's get into this battle, guys. Let's get going, and let's see whether we can beat this darn army that is pretty much a lot better than ours really when you look at it because we have not much infantry they match us on missile men definitely we don't really have the advantage on cavalry either uh, because they've got two progenoi we've got two progenoi we've got two generals but it's about the same amount as him if not a little less so <laughs> overall we are underpowered against this army but we should be able to win just because the AI might be a little dumb and leave a few troops outside of the city. So, let's go. So, this is how we've set up. We basically want to go down this way. We've seen this tactic many times before, guys, haven't we? Where we bait them off the town square and, you know, corral them into there. Which is, you know, a relatively decent tactic. But I'm hoping that they send a few troops outside of the city if they pop in. Yes, they have lots of them. Archers, Ephebes, Prodromoi. Prodromoi is coming forward right away. In fact, they're bringing like most of their army forward. So let's get our infantry in here. What are they? Ephebes, I think we should go for the attack there, definitely. They're going, the Prodromoi are going for a charge right away. That's insane. That's insane. <laughs> I was not expecting that. But that's quite good for us. I don't mind if those Ephebes get away now. You guys can get here. Hopefully fire into the side of them. We're going to bring our Foreign Thorio Foroi around. Looks like they just are obsessed with this, uh, this poor unit of Epilectoi. I mean, they are by far our best unit. So let's get the Prodromoi in there too. And what are they doing? That's... It's kind of crazy, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Especially against Epilectoi. How are they doing with the rest of their troops? I mean, all they've got left then is an Hoplite, an Ephebes, and a Prodromoi, and potentially the General, yes. So, there we go. You guys should now be firing in there. Please, that would be excellent. You guys need to come forward. And then when we're ready, we are going to charge in. We're going to fire the Javis first. Um, although, these guys... Let's get them off for now. I don't want them to fire any more Javis. Guys, don't fire Javis anymore. Same with you guys. Stop firing. We'll go after them and chase them down. You guys come in here and see if you can get the Hoplites. You guys get the Hoplites too. We're going to try and kill all of these routing men. These guys should want to route very soon as well. And here comes the General. So we've got to try and mop up all of these boys before the General arrives. 
And it's just chaos, really, isn't it? Guys, 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 no, 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 no. Don't fire, don't fire, don't fire. Let's send a Prodromite after you. And the Hoplites are still holding strong, so that's interesting. You guys fight them. Where's the Prodromoi? Prodromoi, get out. Prodromoi, get out. And Generals, let's come out too. Bit of a mess, but at least we've now got the right units fighting properly. And where did that General go? They came over there. That's fine. Uh, we're just going to wait to see what happens. They've got that other unit of Prodromoi too. Guys, would you like mind chasing the Acontisti down? If you're not going to do that, that's fine. We'll deal with that Prodromoi ourselves. This Hoplite's sticking in the fight for quite a while, but we have just wiped out, you know, half of their army, really. <laughs> yep, exactly half. So let's get the Fire at Will on as well. And let's see whether we can deal with that Prodromoi ourselves. The General's on the way, but I don't think that's going to be too much of a worry, really. These guys fully surrounding them. They're still not breaking, which is very, very surprising, uh, I've got to say. Do we go for the charge on the Prodromoi? I think we do, and we'll go for a charge on the Acontisti. There we go. Doesn't look like the Prodromoi really want to do much here. So let's go for the charge on them. Should be a good charge. That was not a good charge. You've not killed anyone, my friend. <laughs> not killed anyone. That's awful. There we go. Bit of a better charge. Now let's come out and let's cycle in the General. Come on, General. Let's go straight in there if you can. And how are we doing over here? We're still absolutely shredding them. Now, unfortunately, we cannot retrain the Epilectoi yet. But in the campaign, it's not going to be that long before you can actually train the Epilectoi. So don't worry too much about getting him damaged early on in the campaign. Just use him as a sort of a mercenary unit and get him some experience. And when you can retrain him, you're going to be able to train him with some good experience again, which will be fantastic. Okay, so it looks like the enemy is bringing a lot of its men out of the city here. So we are going to bring our foreign Thurio Foroi forward and the two generals as quick as possible to try and keep them in here. And we're going to use the Argive Epilectoi to just, sorry, a Kian Epilectoi to just hold the lines for now. These units are going to uh, push through, hopefully, and not get involved in the fighting if they can. But we shall see. We shall see. You guys, let's get you in here. There we go. Let's fire at them. And then we'll use the general slightly later on to charge if they can. There we go. Kill them. If you guys can fire, that would be excellent. I know it takes them a little while to register to fire. But uh, hopefully we can beat these guys. If not, we're going to have to jump our generals out. And I think we're going to have to do that right now. Not great. But we got to jump them out. Yeah, we just took loads of friendly fire there, which is not excellent. <laughs> Guys, go! Go, please go. Just go. 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 Go! Jesus Christ, honestly. <laughs> Sometimes, man. Um, what are you, are you running around in a fucking circle, you lunatic? What is he doing, man? Go away. Just go over there. Go, <laughs> you idiots. Okay, well, that's fine for us. Because what that means is we can get this guy here ready to fire into them. And we can get this guy here ready to come onto the town square. And we've got our Prodromoi over this way. So they can come onto the town square too. You guys can fire on the town square if you want. That was This was just to bring these guys off the town square. Get over there. Hopefully, these guys are as tired as us. They are. So that's good. What are we fighting here? Some random hoplites. Okay. Who's the one who was supposed to go there? You were supposed to go there. Go, 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 my friend. Go. Just just leave. Just leave. I don't care. <laughs> go there. Go. Go there, maybe? Why do they have to go there to go there? That makes 100% sense, my friends. Right, Prodromoy. Didn't I tell the Prodromoy to come here? Okay, now they'll come. Apparently, they won't attack. <laughs> oh, pathing, man. Pathing. Like, like, what is this? Like, what is this? Come on, guys. Let's go. <sighs> come on, men. Come on. But hopefully, that once they're here, they can fire. Let's halt them. Where's the old... Oh, they, they are kind of catching us. 
We need to draw this general back into the city somehow. Oh, dearie me. Dear, dearie me. Let's go that way. Go, go, go. Uh, well, that would not be ideal, would it? Uh, because they're going to come into the back of our guys. But we do need some support here. Are you guys firing yet? Fire? See, this is what I'm talking about. Why are they doing that? Go, go, go. Okay, looks like they might might actually uh, yeah, kill them. Uh, looks like we've managed to, to hold them off for a little bit. So what I might do is get the foreign Thurio Foroi here. There we go. We've got the generals on the town square now. Okay, they've gone for the uh, the old charge. Good. The poor Epilectoi are taking a bit of a damage, but we've only got 2 minutes 50 to survive. Okay, looks like they're coming this way. So what we're going to do, turn these guys around, ready to fire at the enemy. Let's go. So the poor Epilectoi are going to get absolutely battered. We basically just uh, relied on them wholeheartedly for this. But now, are they broken? Wow, was not expecting that. Well, you guys halt. Now fire. Should be able to fire in there, hopefully. So fire at the Greek general's bodyguard, please. So what we're going to do now is bring the uh, the Thurio Foroi over this way. Put them on fire at will too. And hopefully this Thurio Foroi can just hold them for a while. You guys want to get you on the town. Why would you go that way? Surely that's not faster. Jesus. <laughs> and I'm hoping these guys can now fire in there, which is great. They can. And, yeah, we've only got two minutes to wait. So let's see whether this works or not, guys. I have no idea. So with 15 seconds to go, looks like we have fully blocked off this area. We lost a lot of our Epilectoi, which is our best unit, unfortunately. But, uh, yeah, everything else has been fine. And a glorious victory. Unless these guys, these guys decide to break at the last moment. But a glorious victory, nonetheless. And like I say, you can go for Olympia instead and hope for a drawout battle. And what that's going to provide is the ability to maybe have a little less losses because you can use your cavalry a little bit more freely. However, going for Ellis to start with is a very good way of getting a little bit richer and knocking out this army really quickly early in the campaign. So let's end the battle there. We still lost a lot less than them so a glorious victory nonetheless my friends so let's get back on the campaign map and with ellis i know i always say to enslave my friends and there is 2800 population in there what i am going to do with ellis is enslave ellis itself and then we are going to occupy olympia now the reason being is you get a bonus to population growth from enslavement in here so if we have a look at the settlement details, it will come in. Actually, no, because Aegean's not bordering here. You will see a, you should see a trade resource for slaves pop up in here too. But if we have a look at the, you can see half a percent from slavery there. So what that's going to do is allow these towns, like Dima, for example, is going to be growing next turn now, which is fantastic. And now we're making money. I'm going to pop this down to high so Aegeon can start to e uh, expand. Now, the reason why I would recommend doing that enslavement to start with is because Aegeon is the one place we can get the Achaean recruitment for, which is, you know, a very, very difficult thing to build. If you build this yourself from scratch, it's often going to take 40 turns or so. See, five turns there. 7 turns, so that's 12, plus 10, 22, plus 12, 34 turns to get the level 4 recruitment building. Whereas in Ellis, we do not have a recruitment building ourselves, so we are going to have to build that up from scratch. So I want the most population possible in Aegeon rather than anywhere else on the map that even if we went and took alexandria it'd be nowhere near as valuable as igeon to us at this point in the game so that's why i go for the enslavements there but ellis is a relatively decent little town but we are going to leave straight away the epilectoi did bring a lot of men 
back. So I'm wondering, who do I want to leave behind? Let's see if we can merge them. Yeah, let's leave the 18 foreign 304 Roy behind. And let's go to Olympia. We can only get one ram. We've got such a small army now. Going to pop that down to low. And instead of going for an economic building, I know it is a little bit gamey, but we're going to go for the Palisade just in case. I mean, this, the uh, port would be fantastic, but we're going to go for the Palisade just in case. We do not want anyone to boat bombers and just take it back straight away. In fact, let's, uh, let's abandon the siege for a second. Let's use our spy. I always forget to do this, guys, but you should do it uh, yourselves. Just have a look with the spy to see whether the spy... And the spy has opened the gates. I'm tempted to auto-resolve that. 60 losses. That's not too bad. And with Olympia, as Olympia's only a town, we are going to simply just occupy 1,500 people in Olympia. Not bad. And we did lose our general in that siege. So thank you, auto-resolve for that but that's not too much of a worry at all so with our new found wealth we're going to leave behind 18 prodromoi this new uh statue of olympia should also allow us now you can see 125 percent so we can actually go straight from low to high there and both of these areas are going to be very happy on very high and high we can even just with 18 prodromoi when we've just taken the land we can even go all the way up to 80%. Now, there's a couple of things you might want to do in these settlements once you've taken them. And that is destroy the Odeon there or destroy the arena here as well. But it is completely up to you. I'm just going to leave them in there for thematic reasons. We've got a lot of money now right away anyway. And we're going to go back to Aegeon for retraining next turn. And then we'll have an extra hoplite and an extra foreign 304 right we can take into our next conquest depending on what the aetolians do so always remember guys that you have got to mold yourself on the rng the random generation that the ai does the events that happen in your game for example if the aetolians attacked us right now um, we would have to go and fight them. We're not just going to leave that and go for Messene. But if they don't attack us, I think Messene is a good option for us. But you can see we've had no turns so far and we've already taken out Ellis. So that's been a pretty successful first turn, I've got to say. You can still move. Anyone else? No. No one else apart from the cavalry has any movement. But nothing else for us to do now, I don't think. So let's end the turn, guys, and let's see what happens. Actually, sorry, we need to build in Olympia. No point building any recruitment here because there is no recruitment buildings for us to recruit from anyway. But I want to have a look at the AOR in here. You can see the AOR there is just Thuria, Foroi, Elian Hoplites, which are pretty darn good as Hoplites. So you may want to recruit in there. But in Ellis as well... I believe, yeah, just Elian Hoplites is the best AOR we can get here. That's still very good. So it's always worth checking those recruitment buildings when you take a new city. But going for the level 3 will show you the best AOR you can get. Because when you go to level 4, it's just factional units, guys. So do remember that. You'll see level 1 is just basic units and some AOR. And then we go to level 2, which is better AOR and some basic units. Level 3 is a few basic units. And then your level, uh, and then your sort of uh, best AOR as well. And level 4 is your full factional unit. So always just check that level 3 in some of the cities that you take to see what sort of AOR units will be available to you. And that might inform whether you want to build a recruitment building or not. But we do want to build in Olympia. So let's go for, again, the Shrine to Hermes there. I know it's a slightly boring play, but there's nothing else we can really build. That's going to get us plus one. Plus one gold, my friends. <laughs> but once we've got a port there, that is going to add up to be quite a bit more. So let's end the turn there, guys, and let's see what happens. So the end of turn, we're already making a decent chunk of change already, aren't we? Which is fantastic. Let's retrain all those boys that can actually get retrained faction announcements we've got Kleinas who got conqueror of olympia ilutis got some influence and fiscon got some influence as well Kleinas got a spear carrier which is one valor which is actually really good 
and anything interesting on the diplomacy screen. Um, allies with the Antigonids, of course, that's fine. I didn't realise that this doesn't really show up on the first on the first um, uh, the first turn, but that is fine completely. Nothing else for us to do right now. If you did have access to mercenaries, which you won't early in the game, but if you do still have a very big army and you are confident in your ability, then what I would do is I would genuinely go across here, unless those Epirus uh, <laughs> a navy gets in the way, jump on the ship, go across, and do a draw-out battle on Thermon. Now, Thermon is a very important town to the Aetolians. It is their recruitment hub right from the start of the game. And, of course... They also get extra garrison troops in Thermon when you siege it down. So bear that in mind when you are sieging down Thermon, guys. They will get some randomly spawned new garrison troops in there too. So always be wary of that and try and do a drawout battle on Thermon if you don't want to face those extra troops. So let's end the turn again and let's see where we get to. Here's a note, guys. The Aetolians are offering us trade rights, and I don't know whether you've seen it before, but I have said before in a couple of videos that if the AI just offers you trade rights and nothing else, not like trade rights and an alliance, what it means is that they are coming to attack you. <laughs> I don't know why, but let's see whether I'm right about that. But yeah, often the AI offering you trade rights is a surefire way of knowing that in the next few turns they're just going to attack you so we'll accept it anyway and get a bit of extra money off them for a couple of turns and then see what happens and they attacked us straight away <laughs> so <laughs> proof proof is in the pudding my friends proof is in the pudding that is kind of crazy i was not expecting them to do it right then but <laughs> they've done it anyway so lots of wars going on and mainly the Aetolians versus the Achaeans. I mean, look at all these little wars going on in Anatolia. That's fantastic. And the Boeotians and the Aetolians have become allies as well as the Boeotians and the Antigonids, which you tend to see quite a bit at the minute. But we have built quite a lot of stuff in that turn and we've only got 7,000 gold. Now, in terms of our army, it is not exactly... The strongest army you're ever going to see. And I don't know whether it'll be good enough to beat off the Aetolian. So what I am considering doing is, uh, you know, building up our strength a little bit more. Potentially with another couple of infantry units. Now that is a lot of money that we've spent there. However, it's going to be fine. And in Aegeon, let's build up our farming network because we need to grow this city, like I say, because it's got that fourth level of recruitment. Daima is able to expand if we don't go for this. So we want to go for that anyway, just so the squalor doesn't get too much. Now, in Ellis, we are going to go for the port with the rest of our money because the port is going to bring, bring us a lot more than anything we can build in Olympia right now. There's nothing really we want to build in there because I don't think Olympia is going to be a recruitment hub at any point in its life. And it's got 4% population growth right now, which is actually really, really good. So if we put it down, we could get up to 5%. However, 4% is good enough, isn't it, guys? 4% is pretty darn good so we're going to chill for a couple of turns see whether the Aetolians do actually attack us other than just blockading our ports that's actually a little bit annoying because we were at about 800 900 and now we've got no trade uh, via the sea for Daima at all which is a little bit annoying but that's fine guys let's end the turn and let's see where we get to so here we are two turns later guys and we're going to get our spy across into now Pactos and he got killed. Great. We've been saving him to open the gates. Our disposable battering ram has been destroyed, unfortunately. But now we do have quite a few more troops. So we are going to bring them all into the battle and go after now Pactos. We have to get through now Pactos to get across to this land because, yeah, we are blockaded right now by the uh, Aetolians themselves. We're going to have one turn of hurt, guys. One single turn of hurt where we are losing a little bit of cash. 
because of our new troops. But apart from that, it should be fine. Daima is ready to upgrade once again. But again, that's not a problem. We can try and scam some more money off the AI. So I'm going to try that. But if I don't manage to get any, I will see you at the end of the next turn when we go for now. Pactos. So that army over there by Thermon has just remained pretty much stable, which is fantastic for us because if we can take now Pactos without many losses, we are going to go after Captain Danaos and try and take Thermon in a draw-up battle. And that should really just hamper and hamstring their attempts to train any troops at all because with the Aetolians, if you remember, guys, this is where they get pretty much all of their troops early on in the campaign. With the remaining amount of our money, we're going to keep going with some more hoplites. That is going to take us into the negative, but that's fine because once we've taken now Pactos, we'll be back in the positive again. No problem whatsoever. So I think what I'm going to do, guys, I'm going to pretty much edit out this whole battle just so show you the results at the end mainly because of time you know some of these videos have gone on for a very long time and yeah i think you know I'd, i think you'd rather see the draw out battle rather than this standard siege battle so i'll see you at the end of the battle guys hopefully i've managed to retain uh, most of these troops but i guess we'll find out Well, there we are, guys. Actually, a fantastic siege battle for us. We managed to fully surround the Epilectoi and the General. And they did a bit of damage, but we managed to get some javelins into the back of them, which was fantastic. And we absolutely smashed them. So a glorious victory. Let's get back on that campaign map. Now, with now Pactos, we are going to enslave them because they're a little bit off the uh, going up to a city and we also want to force some um, growth into our other cities. Looks like Messene. I didn't even see this before. Looks like they're coming after Ellis. Sometimes they do that. That's fine. I mean, if we take out this army here, then we are fine. So yeah, I think that's fine. Let's uh, merge this foreign Thurio for right. You hold control and drag to do this, guys, and it will merge the two units together. So let's do that, and we'll leave that 45 behind there. How is the happiness? Not too great. Let's also destroy this. Some extra cash for us there. And now Pactus is actually a really good city with that shipwright in there too. 255 from trade. Trading with Corinth and Sparta right from the start. Very nice indeed. Now Olympia expands. But I think instead of Olympia, we are going to go for Daima because it is a recruitment hub for us and also a little bit more unhappy than Olympia is right now. We've got a grudge holding slave. Oh, dear. That's not good for us. But let's go for this battle here. And it says that we are going to get absolutely slapped around. So let's make sure that there are no mercenaries available. Greek Peltasts. Hmm. That's not the best mercenary available for us, is it? They have more Epilectoi. They've got straight on two. They've got a couple of Prodromoys, a couple of Hoplites. Mm, that is going to be a very, very tough battle to fight. I'm not going to lie. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to bring Margos across for now. Leave this undefended so that we've just got a bit of extra cavalry. We, we could even bring Dion too. He definitely has... The movement to do that. So let's do that. I think we're going to have to do that just to beat their cavalry and then be able to beat this army. Uh, and then those two will have enough movement points to move back after the turn as well. So it's not going to be a problem at all. So let's get into this battle, guys. A nice draw out battle for us to take Thermon. And what a lovely battle map. However... <laughs> It's very likely that the AI is going to be up in this region. I don't think these are passable. No, they're not. But yeah, the AI is definitely going to be up on the hill. So uh, we're going to have to rush up a hill, which is never fun <laughs> or ideal. But let's get these guys with their fire at will on. We're going to skirmish in front for now and then probably flank later on if we can. So let's get ready to go. And are they up the hill? Yes, they are. Who would have thought it, my friends? Who would have thought it? But I don't know where their actual other army is coming in from. 
So we are going to try and rush. The other army's coming in all the way over there. So what they're going to want to do is try to merge up their armies. So we probably want to destroy this first army ASAP. And by the time we've done that, that second army should be in the battle far enough for us to wipe them out. Remember, we've got to kill the general of this army. Uh, what's he called? Straight on. And we've also got to fully destroy this army in order to take Thermon. But as long as we win the battle, guys, we shouldn't have too much of a problem taking Thermon down the line. Well, here they come. Let's move just slightly further forward if we can. Let's keep going. Slightly further forward. Let's halt everyone now. Halt. And now fire skirmishers. And then we will retreat with them. Aetolian Peltas over there. Let's get rid of them. They are generally a very good unit, the Aetolian Peltas. So let's skirmish a little bit. And then we're going to come through with our infantry all the way through. Looks like their Peltas are going for the charge. Don't really mind that, but I would prefer my Peltas to get out of there. But that has also sort of wasted a lot of our ammo in there too. Looks like the Aetolian Peltas are going to retreat from that. So let's come forward. And let's bring these guys forward too. Because we're getting shredded by javelins at the moment. Which is not good for us. Akontistai, we're going to bring you around this way to deal with the Prodromoi. We're also going to bring the Prodromoi that side. And we're going to bring our cavalry around the bottom side there too. You guys all get in there and ready to fire. Fire at the hoplites. You guys too. And these guys can come forward. And they're just going to jump around the side there as well. You guys get there. We'll take you off fire. We'll, how, what is happening to the uh, Epilecto? Oh, it's just the Javelins. The Javelins are shredding them in there. Where did the rest of the uh, Peltas go? Where are they? Why are they going this way? That's very strange. You guys fire at them. You guys come around. Look at all their, uh, all their troops. You guys come forward. Bit messy, not gonna lie. But uh, yeah, let's get our generals around into the back. If we can, let's go after the Peltas. And let's see if we can kill that General's Prodromoi there. I don't know what these guys are doing at all. Oh, how did you not move either, Kleinas? So sorry about that. These guys are destroying this Prodromoi. Destroying it completely. Very nice indeed. You Generals, let's get you up into those guys. You guys, let's get you around this way. What are they? They're just standard Greek archers. That army is still an absolute mile away. So we should be good enough here to kill this army quite handily. Especially if we can destroy those guys quite easily. Let's not worry about that Prodromoi anymore. In fact, you go, guys go after them. Going to bring the Akontistai around this way, ready to fire at the enemy. But these generals are going to be invaluable here. 21. What I'm going to do is I'm going to send Klimas to go and deal with the rest of them and use these guys to charge down everyone else. You guys get firing. You guys fire at them now. What are you? You are Foreign 304i. That's fine. So, yeah, we're going to try and make sure we kill all of these units one by one, like we should. You guys are firing that way. I don't want that. I want you to fire at the Prodromoi instead. We've got to try and destroy all these units, remember, guys. That's the one thing. I don't really want that Prodromoi just chasing them down forever because the Prodromoi is perfect in this situation to chase down all the men. So you guys go after them. You guys go after them. Actually, you guys go there. They can run through these farms. I was not expecting that to start with, but that's fine. I do still want this unit, this army, to come all the way into the fight rather than withdraw. But either way, it makes the, uh, the siege battle a lot easier uh, than doing nothing. So let's go with that. You guys get there. There goes the general. You guys come around and hopefully we can fully surround this army now. Let's do that. You guys take out those boys. Good. We're not really even using our cavalry against their infantry right now because we don't need to per se. You fire in there. You guys are firing at the wrong people. So let's go for that. Let's bring you up here, Prodromoi. You can just chase down people for now. These poor generals are going to get a little tired, but I don't really mind that because later on it's going to be fine. These javelins are shredding these boys. Look at that. Look at that. Very nice. Very nice. We love to see that. Very good shredding. What's going on here? 
Ah, dearie me, dearie me. We did miss their Prodromoy's charge. So we chased them off for ages, and then they did nothing. Um, so <laughs> great. But those guys have managed to run off the map now, so I think one good charge, and we'll be very good with the rest of these boys. How is that fight going? We should be winning that. There we go. We did lose a lot of Prodromoy for the old fight, so that's not ideal for us. Uh, you guys are going to come up here too. And like I say, we don't really need to do much else here other than breaking these armies. Everyone get in here just with the old swords. And we should be good enough to beat them. We've still got to beat some Epilectoi, remember, guys. So I did want to save a couple of uh, couple of jabbies. But looks like we've not managed to do that for now. We need to rest our generals. So I'm going to leave them. And the Prodromoi can go and chase everyone else down. These guys can fully surround this unit. That'd be fantastic, and if we can kill that before the other army arrives, that'd be great. Here comes the other army. Now, it's not a done deal by any means, especially with such a large general's bodyguard and, you know, uh, Epilectoid too. So we do need to still be a little bit careful, especially on this charge here. Luckily, he's charged half of them Hoplites and some of them the Epilectoid too. So that's actually not too bad. We should be okay there. But like I say, we've got to be very wary of that Epilectoi unit going forward. Now, they are winded, but all our guys are very tired. So that is not going to help us one bit. You guys are going to come forward there. And we're going to go for the charge on the Peltas eventually if we can. If these guys catch them, then we are going to go for the charge on the old Peltas. Looks like they're firing at the hoplites. I don't mind that for now. You guys come forward too. And hopefully we can surround that general's bodyguard. Prodromoy is going to come down this way. Just so it can deal with the enemy for now. You guys are the ones taking a lot of damage here. So let's go for the Greek, um, the Greek uh, general there. And we're going to chase down the Peltas. Same with the Prodromoy. Chase down the Peltas if you can. Uh, come over that way so you don't get attacked by the Epilectoid. And once this general's dead, I don't think the Epilectoid will stick around for too long. That's their king. So there we go. Looks like the Epilectoid have just disengaged and decided to come through. There we go. Get, get out of there. Get out of there, guys. Get out of there. The Epilectoid are coming. So that unit doesn't matter anymore. So we need to fully surround this Epilectoid now. So let's go for that. Uh, and yeah. Don't everyone charge, actually. That's not the <laughs> not a good idea. <laughs> we're all going to come around. There we go. And now we're out of the fight. These guys can go after them. And we'll go after that goddamn general's bodyguard there. Um, and we just need to fully surround this Epilectoi unit. Why do they always decide to, you know, engage and then double engage? I never understand that. Seems very weird. <laughs> like, seems pointless as well. So, okay, they're going for the charge there. No problem. Well, we are just going to break these guys. Oh, my God. They broke the foreign Thurio Foroi with that. That's insane <laughs> and stupid, but okay. I mean, this unit is, is just dumb. I don't know what they're doing, but okay. Cavalry, get out. You guys get around the back here if you can. We aren't flanking with the best of our units right now. Um... But that's not a problem. Like, like, what are they doing here? That's just, just a bit annoying. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. <laughs> we are going to have a pretty damaged army after this. Guys, are you going to engage, please? That would be great. There we go. What are these Peltas doing? Let's get rid of them. I fucking hate them. Kill them all. Kill them all. Where are they going? Our Prodromoy has started running. They weren't even engaged in combat. <laughs> you guys get over this way to chase down the enemy. Poor Peltas. I know our guys are very tired, but we will still be able to catch them. And, oh, I just need to not run the cavalry there. Right, let's just do their technique of just running through men. Go, just run through them. Like, <laughs> just run through them. That's what they do all the time, and it seems to work for the AI, so that's what I'm going to do. Why are you breaking, man? Guys, just run through them. Why is everyone breaking? Everyone is just breaking. That is so dumb. Come on. You clearly won the battle, but apparently these Epilectoid are just too good. Right, there we go. Kill all of these fools. 
And then the Epilectoi will be left on their own. I mean, I'm not so confident in our ability to, you know, kill the Epilectoi just with our infantry troops. I thought they would probably break after the king was killed. But what do we got here? Twelve of them. Hmm. If we kill everyone else, we should be fine. So I don't think we need to worry about the twelve of them. Come on, guys. I know you're really tired. But it's okay. We can fully surround this unit and we'll be in a good place. I think I don't want to fully surround them, actually. What I want to do is use my cavalry to charge them a few times. So let's do that. And there we go. We've broken the Epilectoi. More bloody than I was expecting this battle. But it has pretty much broken the Aetolians in general. So let's end this battle guys mop up the rest of the troops and hopefully thermon shall be ours and there we go guys a marmalization for the boys and we absolutely destroyed both armies so thermon should be ours so there we go let's move margos back into igion and let's move uh what's he called dion back into dima so we know what we're doing Let's get it back in here. And let's... I mean, Thermon... Hmm. I wish it would tell you what level of settlement that it is. Because <laughs> maybe it's not a town anymore. Let's just occupy for now. Because we do have a couple of settlements that need rebuilding up. And what I'm thinking of doing is going for a cheeky little bit of a blitz attack. Uh, and going straight for Oinadai, which only has a faction leader guy in. And this one that does have three units in. So we've got to be slightly wary of that. But let's have a look at Thermon. As you can see, a really good little recruitment hub. Um, and it is still only a town. So we are going to upgrade that straight away. And I will do Olympia soon after this turn. We need 200 more gold. I wonder if there's anything we can destroy. I mean, trying to Artemis is fine, so I don't want to destroy that. Now, nothing else that we can actually destroy. Who would we leave behind here, then? Probably the 22 Epilectoi until they can get retrained. So let's pop back out. Now, hmm. Yeah, I, this army is just so damaged now that I really don't think it's going to it's going to do too much harm to just pop back to Igeon and go for retraining them all. So instead of building that in Thermon, let's destroy that building. Let's cancel that for now. Let's retrain all of them. Let's go for that as well. And yes, I think we're good. I think we're good. We could go for another foreign 304. -oy. I know they're not very good, but that's all we can really <laughs> afford to muster right now. I mean, what that uh, building... Oh, it's a blacksmith in now, Pactos. That's fine. I should probably actually send some of our troops over there at some point. But for now, that's fine. Nothing else we can really build. So I'm going to leave it there. Actually, let's build the trader in Igeon because traders and markets allow so many more buildings, my friend. So always remember to build them in. That's probably the reason... Why you can't build a blacksmith and stuff because of that problem. So let's get that down to low two. And let's end the turn. And let's see what happens with Masene. <laughs> I was just about to say, we just got an alliance with Masene just to stop them attacking us. Because Clion did die. So we are definitely going to accept that adoption in there. I Sagaras. And we're going to send him straight to Dima. I'm going to go down to high for now while it's building that building up. And they did actually damage the militia barracks. So I wonder, yeah, the foreign 304 I got cancelled because of that. Which is not ideal really, is it my friends? So let's pop that building in there too. We've got a new faction heir which is Kleinas. I'm surprised he is a faction heir. I would like to get rid of this guy so can i move that around so i would like to move the grudge holding slave we can't actually move that cannot be moved oh that's a bit annoying because that <laughs> does really reduce his uh his abilities but that's fine so let's go for the old blitz attack on the aetolians 
And yeah, we got the port in Ellis now, so that really does help with our income over in Ellis. We don't have enough yet to build this in Olympia. So that's not a problem. We hopefully will do next turn. So I'm going to save my money. And what we're going to do, we're going to take the sort of better units across to Delphoi. We're going to go for the siege there. We do have enough to build the ram there straight away. And we're going to go to Oinadai too. It's going to take two turns to do that in Oinadai. I am worried about the Akarnanians. But I think it will be fine. I think it will be fine. Let's also pop you down to low just for now as you're getting a little bit larger. A little bit big for your boots, my friend. A bit, a little bit big for your old boots. But uh, yeah, Thermon. We're going to build that and then we're going to build up a recruitment hub there. 100%. And we need to build in Olympia too. So let's end the turn, guys. And let's see where we get to and whether we can take out these armies straight away. So here we are, another candidate for adoption. Let's accept that they can go and actually join the other army. So we have a little bit extra strength in this army when we are attacking into that city. And we've got a few trade increases. Agonistes Olympiados, Olympic competitor. Yes, of course. We've got one guy going for the old Olympics now. Where are we upgrading? We are upgrading Olympia. We've got Dima as well upgrading, which is fantastic. In fact, we should probably place that ahead so it gets done. That is all our money for this turn. I'm thinking, though, this fight next turn. <laughs> Not this turn. Next turn should be nice and easy. I think I will do this one again, guys. But let's do it without showing too much. And I'll do it nice and quick for you guys so you can see that we have one Hieron of Delphoi the faction leader let's get into the battle and let's kill him so a great victory for us guys 139 losses it was a little bit more than I was expecting however that general was relatively strong to be honest and the rest of the units did die pretty quickly but they got a few javis off in the process so a good victory nonetheless, and that makes the Aetolians weaker and weaker. So now we have Delphoi. Let's just occupy Delphoi as well, and of course, destroy that. Delphoi is a relatively decent place. We got the Oracle of Delphi 2, which is pretty cool. And I think we'll leave, and we'll leave behind the Akontistai. Nice little unit that can hold that pretty well now this is what i was talking about in terms of the forts i'm thinking we put a fort in here to stop the goddamn boeotians attacking us but who do we want to go in there i mean that's the problem at the minute we don't really have any units to spare so i'm thinking potentially just those progemoi for now because they've got a pretty cheap uh, amount of um you know upkeep for them so let's put them in there for now we don't really need to worry about the north because it's the greek city states and they are of course uh quite uh passive towards the player shall we say so i think a good victory there nonetheless and we can take oinadai very soon now the epirotes attacking stratos is not ideal i've got to say <laughs> <laughs> because if they take Stratos, very, very likely that they will attack us. And can we deal with that army at the minute with Zistavori in and potentially quite a few Deuteroi? Although Deuteroi are bad phalangites, as we've seen in the Epirus campaign, um, you know, dealing with them is still not going to be very fun indeed. I have also moved this ship here so that we can go and finally take out Zakynthos 2 if we get to that point once we've taken Oinadai. So that should be nice and easy for us as well. We do have another Achaean Hoplite there. Um, and do we have a Foreign Thurio Foray on the way? No, we do not. So that's all we've got left now is that singular Hoplite to come and join these boys. But that's fine. Let's end the turn, guys, and let's see where we get to. So it looks like Epirus is on the way to attack the Akarnanians, but they did actually just offer us an alliance. So I have accepted the alliance for now. How long that will last, mm, I have no idea. <laughs> so <laughs> we've got to be very wary. You've always got to be wary of the oh, 216, man. 
For that, you will get enslaved. Um, <laughs> 216. That's quite a large chunk, I'm not going to lie, of our army. Let's retrain those boys. Let's also get another hoplite in there too. It's pretty much going to be a meat and potatoes army, I think we'll see going forward. Just uh, infantry and uh, generals. Now, we could go and take Zakynthos too at some point. But yeah, Oinadai is not the greatest town anyway. So we don't need it, really need to worry about it too much. Olympia's still building that. One more turn on Daima, it would seem. And yeah, Igeon. We just need to get this up to the next level. So that would be fantastic if we can do at some point. But yeah, going forward, let's have a look at what else we can do and where we want to go next. Because we're in a pretty stable situation right now. But I want to see what Epirus does as well. So the Aetolians are offering us a ceasefire. I mean, the 8,390 is very nice indeed. I would like to make them into a protectorate, but let's just cancel that for now because I do still want to go for Zizkynthos. But there we go. Here comes the Boeotians. Very good job we built that port, that uh, fort, shall we say, <laughs> because God damn it, they want to take that. I think they will wait though. That's the main thing. Hmm, the Akarnanians. I mean, the Akarnanians are enemies of Epirus. If we just move slightly, I definitely don't care about the Akarnanians in the same way, unless they're willing to offer something else. But yeah, it doesn't seem like they will. So yeah, I'm going to keep the Epirote Alliance for now. Let's accept this guy in here. And then we can maybe bring home some troops that are actually decent that we do want to use in battle. So... Let's go and send this guy across to now Pactos and let's bring this foreign Thurio Foroi home and make sure we retrain him too. Then we'll take this army. Now, you think we should go for the, uh, the Boeotians, but really I'm not that bothered uh, about the Boeotians. So we're going to go across here. We're going to go for Zakynthos instead. I'm surprised it doesn't have any more movement points. Maybe I should have moved them slightly differently there. A little bit annoying. I was kind of banking on being able to take Zakynthos this turn. Or next turn, should I say. But that's fine. I don't think the Boeotians will have built any siege equipment. No, not yet. So we really don't need to worry about it too much. We can also wait a little bit of time. And we'll have some more units in the army. Which is going to be better for us overall. And what have we got to build? I mean, we've got a lot of places that are not building right now. So, Igeon, I'm thinking we go for the Blacksmith. That's probably the best option. In fact, no, let's go for the Sewer because that's going to bring us more population growth, which we absolutely do need. So, Dimer over here, I would ideally like to start getting some barracks. So, we'll leave that for now. And then elsewhere, we can probably get some farms but Delphoi actually needs expanding. So let's save our money and let's see where we get to. And the Antigonids are offering us an alliance. 100% do want to accept that. However, they are, you know, at war with Epirus. So I am going to reject this. It's a very rare occasion that we're going to reject an alliance from a very big enemy. But that's... Oh, and they just attacked us if we didn't accept the alliance. <laughs> Thanks, Antigonids. That's great. So they did manage to get through past the Greek city-states to bring Aeolus over there. That's no problem at all. Let's also resolve this. 432, yes. Uh, let's enslave them because of that. <laughs> and let's leave behind the 19. In fact, let's not leave behind anyone if we can. Where are our ships? They are just here. Don't go into the bad area let's also make sure we leave no one behind here what is that temple that is the temple of persephone i don't mind that that's fine so let's get this army back to the capital over here let's get these guys back in the port and uh, let's go into the capital for now uh we can't retrain everyone so i'm going to cancel all that repairing we can only retrain one person with that. Was there anything else that I built this turn? I don't think so. 
But yeah, I don't think these guys are going to get any uh, rams or anything like that for a while. So let's leave them be. It might be two turns. And if it is two turns, that's fine. Like I say, guys, you just don't need to panic. God, on extreme mode, Epirus already has two pretty darn nice armies. I really don't want to face them at any point, to be honest. <laughs> so let's also adjust all our tax rates. They don't need to be so low anymore. Uh, maybe we can get you onto high. Yes, we can. Leave you on high. You're on high too. Very high as well. And we have two foreign Thurioforoi in there, which is fantastic. So we do now have a relatively decent army. No, <laughs> no skirmish or missile troops, which is not ideal. But the foreign Thurioforoi kind of make up for that. So that's fine. And uh, let's put you down to low just to make sure you don't rebel out of our hands so let's end the turn and let's see where we get to well argos and militos have actually come out of their hiding from behind the antigonid kingdom now which is fantastic my friends very very good indeed something we can all be very very happy about honestly at this point we don't really need to do too much because you know, this army is on the way. I wonder whether it would be a good idea to take out these boys and maybe put, put another fort there <laughs> and just block them in. Because at the moment, there's not really too many avenues for expansion that are that good for us right now. Epirus to our north. Boetians maybe are the only one. So, yes, I think we will actually then go for them. I have uh, <laughs> I have convinced myself that that is the right way to go. So let's go for the Boetians over there. Let's keep on going then as well. I'm just going to auto-resolve that. 100 people lost. That's not too bad. And there's this big army over here. I wonder what is in that army. Where is... Oh, the spy died, didn't they? <laughs> I think we come forward. Can we see any more? No, we can't. So let's have a look. It's predominantly there's some decent hoplites and Thurioforoi in here. But a lot of it is missile troops. The secondary army is just simply a general. We've got two generals. They've got two generals. They do have some Zistaphori and some Prodromoi though as well. Which is always a little bit of a worry. Never fantastic. So let's have a look at what we want to do about that. I mean, I could bring this Prodromoi in here just for a single battle. The problem is, once this battle is done, we will not be able to move because of the Greek city-states <laughs> over there, which is a little bit annoying. But that's fine. I tell you what, guys, it's been a very, very long recording for me. So we are going to do the old auto win in here. I know it's a bit gamey, and I know you like to see me play these battles, but we have had a couple of very large battles already, and, you know, I've been recording this actually over three days now. <laughs> so, yeah, it's been a long old recording, or it at least feels quite long anyway. Um, but hopefully we can move out from here next turn so that we can go and siege down Orchomenos, which is where all their army... This is the problem with doing the auto-resolves is... You know, half their army still exists and is still fine. Um, so that's not ideal. We did have something to upgrade, I believe. It wasn't Ellis, was it? Daima has upgraded now, which is fantastic. Nothing in here. We were going to build recruitment hubs in a couple of places. So let me just check which one would be the best. Most likely Ellis, I would say, would be the best one for us right now unless we start upgrading some of these areas i feel like if we make daima into a, a a cavalry hub and Aegeon can be the military and infantry hub the missile and infantry hub should i say then i think that'll be good i mean city barracks would be nice because what do we get at level two here we get the akian hoplites here if we get to level two and normal thurio foroi so, yeah, it would be very nice to get that. But I think stables, indeed, will be good as well. So, let's get that in Dimer. And that is going to be our building for this turn. So, let's end the turn there, guys. And we'll see where we get to.
So Messene has now been destroyed. So I'm assuming that was Sparta. Luckily, we don't actually have a border with Sparta. So I wanted to talk about that. Managing your borders, guys. I know I mention it quite a lot. But at the minute, you can kind of ca categorize your borders based on the risk. So right now, all of this land here, I would say it's pretty low risk because the only people that can attack us here that border us are rebels, which are not going to attack us, and Megalopolis, which out of all the nations in this region, they are the least likely to attack us, I would say. So, yeah, I think, you know, in terms of that, our borders are very well managed on the Peloponnese right now. The only place where we have a little bit of a worry is most definitely with Epirus right next to us. Even though they are allies, I do not trust them one bit at all and you should never trust them when they do something like that so we're going to come around this way and i would really like to do a draw out battle here so that's what we're going to do and we okay it looks like it's quite <laughs> quite far in their favor so i may retreat from that and have to retreat into that fort as we go forward i may have to go back for retraining of this army because of course, they are pretty damaged and not exactly a great army, <laughs> nonetheless. Let's also get an extra Prodromoi as well. And let's keep going with the foreign Thurio Foroi. We just need to bolster our armies. I wonder, however, if there are mercenaries. There are no mercenaries available. So we're going to have to do a bit of a tactical retreat. That army is just a little bit too hard for us to beat right now on very hard, of course. Like, especially with the, the damage we got from that auto resolve so yes we're gonna have to retreat and we're gonna have to assess our options now in terms of building let's have a look at what we can do igeon ideally we want to keep building military buildings so a blacksmith would be fantastic and in ellis i think we're going to go for the communal farming to try and grow this place uh, and thermon would be yeah the thermon is building some recruitment hub right now which will be glorious because that will allow us to get Aetolian hoplites as well, which are a okay hoplite, but it's at least something that we can recruit, isn't it, my friends? That has to be one of the stupidest things I think I've ever seen the AI do. They completely ignored us and they decided to siege down the fort. And they left a juicy little boy for a draw-out battle. I am honestly a bit lost for words by how dumb that was but uh i mean <laughs> we're gonna keep trying what is the level two we get the itolian thurio foroi standard thurio foroi really aren't they standard thurio foroi and itolian peltas i mean that's fine it doesn't add too much to what we can recruit here because we already have the decent recruitment building so genuinely i think at thermon Let's go. For wow. <laughs> yes, my friends. Wow, wow, wow. I think, um, believe me when I say that ports are the best economic options now <laughs> in the game. Yes, they are very, very good. But let's do this draw out battle. I will do it on the map, guys. So let's get into it. Well, here we go, guys. We are engaging that secondary army which is the army that we really do care about, that we do want to fully destroy. I mean, we want to destroy both armies fully, and that's going to be very hard for the Prodromoi and Zistaphoroi army. So we are going to have to be careful with that. Luckily, this army is not really that good. Just doesn't have that much. Oh, here comes the general. Let's kill him then. I don't know. <laughs> He's run through. It looks like everyone else has kind of died in his unit. These guys should all be firing, though. Because they do have some Neoniskoi too. There we go. Uh, he is deaded. Very good indeed. Let's go back this way then. Looks like this army is just not even going to uh, to help them out. Which is very weird. But okay. We will come around. It's very hard to see with these trees. What is that? Neoniskoi, absolute trash munchers. Let's go for the Greek slingers then with the cavalry while they're still fresh-ish. You guys go and fight the Neoniskoi. We're going to keep coming around and flanking if we can. You guys fight them. And you guys, let's get up here. 
Round the side. I do kind of want someone to protect the flank, so I will leave you there. You will get ruined if you get charged, but at least less ruined than some of these guys that are going to be flanking. So you guys get there. We're going to come around the Neoniskoi. Oh my god, look how fast the Greek slingers are, even with our cavalry not tired. Come on. Come on. We can get them. I'm going to leave them there for now because the other army... Okay, here comes the other army. I'm going to fatten up the formation, if possible. That is a Zista Foro, so probably ready to attack. What else do we have here? I mean, these guys are fully surrounded now, so I really am not that bothered. If these guys get uh, attacked. That is not going to be a problem. We have wiped out that slinger now. Now, guys are a little bit more tired, though. So, they do have fresh Zista Foroi. So, I would like to take them out with my Hoplites, if possible. And let's see. They are just going to go for the Dragon Slaying event. They are going to just go straight to try and kill the old General. Which is a good idea by them. So, fair play to the AI. You may be dumb on the campaign map, but you do have... A few tricks up your sleeve, don't you? Where the hell is the Prodromoi now, though? That's the question. So these poor guys have taken a bit of a battering, but we should get a really good charge off into that Zista Foroi. And remember, we've got to kill 85% of this group. So we do not want to let any of these guys rout, especially the Prodromoi. That's going to be the difficulty here, is stopping the Prodromoi routing. Because, of course, the Prodromoi is very quick, a lot quicker than my guys. So we need to make sure we kill nearly all of that Prodromoi unit. Nianisko is actually holding a lot better than I expected there. I'm not going to lie. You guys fire, fight them. You guys can come out because we do not need you right now. The Prodromoi, like I say, I'm not really bothered about it for now. So let's come back this way. In fact, go over there, General. Let's see if we can get a charge into the Nianisko. You guys as well are coming up this way. Where are you going? Let's get you all the way around. I feel like we can absolutely ruin this hoplite if we get them from the flank. So let's get the general into the Neoniskoi. So we are protecting our flank here, guys. Always a good idea to do that. Also to rally your general as you're charging so they don't die on the charge. Looks like the Neoniskoi is gone now. So we are going to kill them all if we can. There goes the Zistaphoroi. And there goes the secondary unit of hoplites. Now that's... A little bit more worrying. Why are you all the way up there? Are they withdrawing? Yes, they are. So, unfortunately, very unfortunately, we are not going to take the city. Jeez, that is that is quite disappointing. Unless that other, other army does not retreat into the city. But it's very, very likely to do so. Unless we've completely, like, blocked them off somehow. Will you attack them? That's what I pressed on, I'm sure. Uh, you guys go after them, and we'll end the battle there, guys. Well, you can see that we only killed 50% of Captain Theocedes' his army, but Saukleas Philopater is fully dead. He was the one manning the city, so we've just got to hope that Theocedes does not go into the city, but it's very likely that he will. And as you can see, he has come into the city there, now, they can probably attack us quite easily, but all I'm doing here is just banking on the AI to be dumb and to not attack us. I mean, if they don't attack us, we're fine. If they do attack us, I feel like this army is dead, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, not an ideal situation to be in. Are there any mercenaries? There is a single 304. We've got to take that, and luckily we had the money for it. Um, these guys, they cannot reach us because of the armies and the Greek city-states there. So we have overextended ourselves, guys. So a lesson to you all. Don't do what I did, which is stupid. I mean, I probably, if I'd known that that was Prodromoi, probably not gone for that battle. But I didn't pay enough attention. So don't do anything stupid like me. And uh, be sensible with your troops. Bring them back for retraining when they do actually need it. So let's end the turn. Let's see and hope that the Boeotians do not attack. Well, apparently the Athenians have absolutely cock-blocked <laughs> the Boeotians there. Thank you, Athenians. I mean, for all the pain and suffering that has been happening in my Epirus campaign because of you. Today, you have been kind. You have been very kind indeed. I genuinely think we need money right now, but 
I mean, Orchomenos is a fantastic uh, city. So I think we just occupy because, again, it's one of those cities that has good buildings everywhere. And it's going to bring us a load of money from destroying that anyway. It's got an Odeon. Shrine to Nike as well, which is fantastic. Let's go for that. Let's also get a Kian Recruitment 1 in there. Straight away. Hmm. Problem being here is we still cannot escape. We need a ship. But the Athenians, sorry, the Antigonids are in the way. Ready. Ideally, we want a ship here to just ship us across. Um, that would be the only real way of surviving. Unless we can walk all the way around, which we're not going to be able to do. But we can try, can't we? Let's leave a one single foreign 304 right in there. Put that down to low. And let's try. I'm going to press space space uh, and then we're gonna get stuck there that's the problem hmm we are very very stuck <laughs> are the boeotians at war with the antigonids because we, we we're at war with oh yeah i forgot about that <laughs> we're at war with the antigonids too but we don't actually really border them anymore so they've not been a bit of an they've not been a nuisance olympia is now trading quite well very nice indeed. We did get some more troops. So let's keep on going. More hoplites in there. More foreign 304 right in there too. Hmm. Yeah, don't get yourselves in these situations, guys. This is supposed to be a guide, not, <laughs> not a disaster campaign. Hmm. I mean, I feel like the best option we can do right now would be going somewhere that these guys cannot reach. Which, if we have a look there, they can reach there. I was considering there. They can reach there. They can't reach there, though. But they could reach over and go there. <laughs> oh, dear. I mean, if we go through this way, it's going to be a few turns before we can even, uh, you know, get out of there. Can we get a ship anywhere else? No, we cannot. So we kind of got to hope that Admiral Perseus just, like, gets out of the way. Hmm... Yeah, there's just so many blockages in this area right now. It's very, very hard to think where we can go. I feel like the only option we have right now is to just go next to this town. And uh, well, I did not mean to actually do that. I mean, while we're there, let's do it. If we are going to siege one down by accident, we might as well actually siege it down. So let's go for that one. And, yeah, we're still recruiting. Are we recruiting in Thermon? No, we're not. So, I think let's start getting some actual missile troops. They're going to be helpful for us going forward. So, let's go with that one. And let's see what else we can build in here. We've got Olympia, which now makes a little bit of cash. So, let's have a look at the market. 31, not very much. So, we'll go for that instead. Now, Pactos as well. Probably the same situation. Get a bit of population growth. Got to be nice. Delphoi can upgrade. Ah, yes. We forgot about Delphoi, didn't we? That was the one that could upgrade. So, let's cancel those last two buildings. That's going to be enough. Fantastic. And let's end the turn there. So, let's auto-resolve this one. 72 losses. Not too bad at all. Let's exterminate Megara as well because... Very likely, we are just going to abandon this settlement. I'm going to leave behind, again, a tiny, tiny garrison of 23 men. So let's do that. And now we can actually kind of escape. We can't go through that way because of the rebel settlement. But we can actually get on a ship. So where could the ship pick us up? If we go there, I believe we can get picked up. But uh, let's hope. We have basically scrapped our way out of this situation. Fantastic. <laughs> We've basically just fought our way out. Now we need to retrain everyone. That's going to be a lot of our money as well. Um, and we are getting some more troops. So when we come back, we will have a lot more troops ready to go too. And this Megara is actually quite a good settlement. It's got silver mines. It's got a port and it kind of controls the strait here too, which is pretty darn good. The Boeotians have gone after Orchomenos, and I'm really not bothered about that. That's actually quite funny. Thank you, Boeotians, for letting us get away with whatever that shenanigans was then. 
of trying to move around all over the place. So fair play to us for managing to escape that. That was pretty lucky, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> it was not it was not skill. It was not anything like that. It was pretty much just luck when we talk about that escape there. So let's end the turn, guys. We'll probably wrap up the guide around now as well because we've got very clear objectives of where we would go next and what you would do and very clear um, you know, safe borders on the Peloponnese that are not really going to get attacked at all, which will be fantastic. So let's also do any building. Dimer as well. Let's consider getting something that's going to improve the public order there. So like the sewers. And then we pretty much don't have anything else. So I'm thinking for Ellis, let's go for the Shrine to Hermes. Because that's going to build up some cash. And then Thermon, two turns until we get that juicy 765 gold from Thermon. That'd be amazing. Acragas and Militus have both been killed. Very, very sad times, my friend. Very sad times indeed. Very sad as well. So let's do some of our closing moves of what we would do if we were in this situation. Now, there's a couple of things that you could do. If you wanted to, but I think the main thing is going after the Boeotians and killing this army. Unfortunately, they are right next to each other. So it's going to be a difficult, difficult play. Especially considering that we can't actually get there because of Athens. So, hmm. Maybe we would go somewhere else. I mean, I'd probably... I was going to say jump on the ship again, but... Don't think that's possible <laughs> right now with the goddamn uh, Antigonids there. So we'd probably just go into that fort and then go next turn when Athens has moved out of the way. Athens, they giveth and they taketh, don't they? They are <laughs> a bit of a bane, the uh, the Athenians. So that's what we'd do. We'd move the army across there. Buildings-wise, we'd probably look at building something else in Aegeon, like the market, for example. And we'd probably go for some communal farming elsewhere where we can get it there we go fantastic so now as much as it seems like we may not be that stable i feel like we are pretty darn stable the only real enemies on our actual borders are of course the antigonids because we took megara and the boeotians as well so what i would do if i was you in this situation is i would take my army i would attack the boeotians they do have rams, so it is likely that they have Orkham they will take Orkomenos next turn. So if they take Orkomenos next turn and we can't get there, I'd wait the turn and then I'd go and siege down Thebes and try and draw them out into a field battle rather than sieging down Orkomenos. Because if they have that big army in there, it's going to be one that you want to wait for the six turns rather than assaulting. So uh, yeah, I would probably go for Thebes and then Tanagra before looking to take on the Antigonids in this region. I'd try to build up a little bit of a navy just so we can own this little space because like you've seen, it's so hard getting back to our capital right now. So I'd probably build up a little bit more of a navy so that we can ferry across here very easily rather than having to do what we did before and try and game our way out of it. Um, as well. But if we look at our core lands over here in Ellis, very, very safe at the moment. Not really much going on. In the north, there is a potential for Epirus to attack us, but they are at war with the Antigonids, just like us. So therefore, that should really play in your favor of them not attacking you and hopefully fighting off the Antigonids. Although, Captain, uh, what's he called? Aristobulos is looking out towards Italy <laughs> like, I want to go back there, man. <laughs> but difficulty-wise, I think the Achaeans, although their roster is fantastic, are a very, very difficult nation. Not quite up to the Athenian standards, I would say. But in some respects, more difficult. So I would give these guys a solid 4 to 4.5 out of 10 in terms of difficulty they are a very difficult nation to do as you've seen i've made some blunders i've made some errors playing with these guys and if you want to see a full campaign as them go and check out rather incoherence videos on them he's in a full campaign as the achaeans so check those out as well but thank you very much for watching guys if you did enjoy please do like and subscribe it really does help the channel out and i will see you all again on the next video